Okay, this is Fox back again for Sound Design Tutorials. This is part two in the deconstruction of my 150 trance track using NI Massive in Bitwig. In the first one, we went over this high pluck sound, which is this. Nice simple delayed pluck. Um, the second one I was going to go over, I've called a low pluck, but having looked at it and opened the patch up, it's exactly the same as the patch what I made for the high pluck, it's just an octave down. No point doing a tutorial on that really, so all, you, all you'd have to do is just shift the notes down in the midi clip down one octave or pitch these down all one octave within your oscillator box depending on how you want to do it. So yeah, this is the sound we're going to be going over today, I've called it an arpeggiator. This runs behind the pluck and the bass line, just giving a little bit more edge. Um, I have done this with the arpeggiator within Bitwig. It's a good, nice, simple arpeggiator. I've set it to eight steps, set it to a quarter note, and the range. This is up and down. It means it's going to go up through the, the keys in the scale and then down through the keys in the scale, or the notes what you've done in the MIDI clip. And I have drew in all the notes which are in the G minor scale, which is what I made this track in. So it's going to go up from one by one and down from one by one on eighth notes, which gives us this. Um, in case you haven't got an arpeggiator, I've drew the notes in if you wanted to see how you would do that. These are all eighth notes, again, each one on the, the um, ascending note in the chord in the scale, sorry, and then it comes back down. That's how you would draw it if you, <coughs> excuse me, that's how you would draw it if you didn't want to use the arpeggiator, but I did, it's, I'm a cheater and it's nice and easy. Um, some effects that I've got on the track itself I'll turn off, I've got a delay. Still, well, we can still hear that. The delay is turned off, but we can still hear the delay. Oh well, this is Bitwig. This is the joy we have. But yeah, anyway, the delay I did is that in as outside massive. The device is turned off there, but it won't let me turn it off. I have to delete it. That's what it sounds like without the delay. So yeah, we'll initialise this and I'll talk you through it quickly how I made it. Okay, the first oscillator was a multiplex, which is... hiding from me at the minute. There we go, it's one of the basic waveforms. I had the wavetable position around 2 o'clock. I'll detune this slightly up 0 0.04, intensity round to full, amp round to full. We're going to uh, route this just to filter 1. I'll leave the arpeggiator running so you can get the gist of the sound as it's going on. That's what it was, it was intended to be. Oscillator 2, click it, turn it on. This is going to keep this on a saw wave where it comes as standard. Intensity all the way to negative, amp on full, route this to filter 1. We're going to change this to bend plus. Oscillator 3 is a square saw wave as well, but this one is all the way around to a square. 
Um, so I oscillate to, we need to pitch this down 0 0.045, just offset it from this one a bit. Oscillator 3, as I say, square saw wave around to a square, intensity at full, amp just barely audible, just to give us a little bit of underlying sound. Okay, I don't use any modulation, oscillator, no noise or feedback. I don't use any of the insert effects, so this whole bottom section you can just ignore. Um, in the voicing section, I'll crank this up to four voices. Turn the pitch cut off on. Boost it so you can just see that first white line coming out the back. Okay, um, the filter I use to give it a little bit more of a plucky effect, um, I use a low pass 2 filter. Keep it in series, even though we're only using the one filter. Mix all the way up to the top for filter 1 and the volume for the filter all the way to full. The resonance we want to pull down from its original position to about 8 o'clock. Cut off pretty much where it is as standard and we're going to, we're going to use an envelope to open this up. Envelope 2. Um, the attack, well we'll play with the attack, but we're going to push it around to just below the F. Yeah, we'll do it the other way, we'll get it to close the filter up. Sounding good to me at the minute. Um, as I say, the attack for envelope 2, then push it out to about 10 o'clock. Level on full, release where it comes as standard. Um, the two effects I use in the master effects section are reverb. Dry wet about 10 o'clock, size about the same. Size a lot less actually, between 8 and 9. Density and colour keep where it is. Dimension expander, turn it on. You can play with these to suit. I always use a dimension expander on a pluck like this, it just helps give it a bit more width and depth. Dry wet I've got and size both about the same, about 10 o'clock. Sounds good to me, as I say, real straightforward. It's pretty much another pluck I've created, but the arpeggiator is just giving us that up and down sort of feel to it. And um, I'll bring this delay back in now, or I will add it a delay, and then we'll set that up as well. Not that, I want a delay two plus delay two. I would have had the left on one, left on two, the right on four. Set the feedbacks to the same and only do about 27%. Okay, that's it, pretty much done. I'll delete the dimension expander and I'll set the delay up within Massive if you're not too sure about doing it within inside your door. So we'll change this to a delay synced. Set this one to What are these ratios of? We'll try two and four within this. Yeah, same settings, two and four. Dry, wet, damp and feedback all pretty much on 12 o'clock. That's it, that's the patch done. Real straightforward again. Arpeggio within Massive. You can um, use a performer to give you the arpeggio. You can set a performer, a stepper, sorry. You can change an LFO to a stepper, assign this to your pitch, set it to go up an octave, and then you can draw these dials in on each note, but it's very, very tricky to get the right note that you want. You'd have to like make sure that each one of them was bang on the note that you wanted in your scale and you'd have to draw it the same shape that I've done 
in the midi clip there. It's a lot easier if you haven't got an arpeggiator just to draw it in your midi clip. It's the only thing uh, massive relaxing my oil is, is an arpeggiator. But yeah, for now that is the sound done. As I say, real straightforward. I'll play it with the rest of the track quick so you can hear it running beyond it again. There you go, nice plucky arpeggiator within Native Instruments Massive. If you've enjoyed this, make sure you subscribe to my channel. Plenty more Massive tutorials and all my other synths that I use, including Serum, which I've recently bought. Um, check me out on Facebook and Google+. Plus. It's Sound Design Tutorials. Best way to get hold of me if you've got any questions about Massive or any, any of the other synths that I use is tweet me at Sound Design Tuts. Okay, I'll post a link in the description to this uh, track so you can see it being made and uh, show how I make this patch within the track itself. But yeah, for now, that's it. Okay, thanks again for watching. Cheers.